Pat Mayo Experience Winter Olympics preview. We're going to be going over some of the odds for most medals, most gold medals, ranking our favorite sports, and we talk about something that no one cares about with low consequences, like the Winter Olympics. You have to talk to Tim Undergust. Tim Undergust. Okay, first, that's not my name. Secondly, the Winter Olympics are cared about by hundreds of millions. Uh, I, I mean, you, 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 you just detract millions from that. Hundreds might be the way you want to go with that. It's, after the World Cup this year, it will be the second most important sporting event in the entire world this year. It's a massive deal. Yeah, it's really not. No one really gives a shit about the Winter Olympics. No, you don't. No, but no, pe people in general don't. It will do massive, massive ratings. It, it will do the lowest ratings of any Winter Olympics in the history of the Winter Olympics. There's no I, no chance. <laughs> well, the, the, I wish I could bet on that. I'd lock that in right now. No, no chance. But what, be, what, what is it that people are tuning in to see exactly? Like, the only thing that rates at the Winter Olympics is figure skating. So after you get through that, what do you got? Oh, the downhill, which is like a national sport in places like Austria and Germany. Uh, the, the speed skating, which, again, is like a national sport in Holland. I mean, they, they, they do very well. Sure. You can ask, like, the 10 million people in Holland. They're fire enough. And plus, it being in Asia means that television markets in South Korea and in China and Japan will probably watch it at a much higher rate than they would if the games were in Europe or in North America. I think this is a chance to maybe do the best ever ratings, uh, at least in Salt Lake City. I, I, I cannot imagine where you would possibly jump to that conclusion, but sure. The market's larger. So. All right, so, so we're, we're going to count the, Ch the Chinese audience. You're really banking on those numbers? The, the, I think the numbers... You, 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 you don't think that they're fictional numbers? Well, I mean, I am dubious of any numbers coming out of a communist country, but... But, but, still... but, but to support your point, you're willing to overlook that. My point was a far modest one, which is that people care about it. Yours is that nobody cares about it, which is outlandish on its face. Why? People don't care about the Winter Olympics. I mean, it, as a whole, people care far more about the Summer Olympics than they do the Winter Olympics. And it just seems like this time around, just... N I haven't heard anyone besides you talk about the Winter Olympics. Well, that's all people are going to talk about for 17 days. I don't know. I, I'm curious about some of this counter-programming. Like, ABC is putting out a Winter Olympics bachelor mini-season. You got Celebrity Big Brother on the go. Like, I feel like I'm going to end up watching more hours of that stuff than the Winter Olympics. Maybe you will, but I mean, I guess we're blessed here in Canada. It's one of the very few things that we have better sports coverage of than the States is our Olympic coverage. And Olympic coverage... Oh, gl gl glory us! I mean, the, the fact I can watch so much biathlon is just, it makes me really proud to be Canadian. Well, whatever. You can sneer all you want. I will. I, you know what? As it not only is my show, but also is my right, I will sneer as much as I fucking want. I will watch all of these events, or as many as I can. Anyway. This is why you're an insane person. That's why you well, get that label. You're an insane person. There's a reason they play these sports and put them on TV once every four years, because no one cares. Well, not that no one cares. No, 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 that's why. No one cares. If people if people did care, they would put it on TV to make some money off of it. The problem is, when you don't put them all together and have them once every four years, you even put them on once a year, no one would care. Well, many of these sports actually actively resist professionalization. So they, there's, there's reasoning for all of this. So what you're saying, we're not even watching the top people in the world do this. We are watching the we're top watching people. We're watching the biggest losers because they can't even make money. We are watching people for whom this th there's no one in the world better at the thing they're doing than this. I mean, not, pretty, I mean, it's pretty clear that that is not the case with hockey. Yeah, I was going to say outside of the hockey tournament, obviously, but good as far as I'm concerned. Good, really good. And you really think that's going to help the ratings of the Winter Olympics? I don't that, care about the that, that the NHL players will not be. Listen, the if Ed, Americans won't know about this, and most countries in the world won't know about this. However, over the Christmas break. Uh, there's a tournament called the World Junior Tournament, which goes on. It's the under-18 World Hockey Championships. Big in Canada, not super big elsewhere. However, at the same time, there's a European Hockey Championship that Canada puts a team into full of, like, scrubs called the Spangler Cup, which runs at almost the exact same time. It wasn't bad during the NHL lockout year because teams like AC Davos had, like, Joe Thornton on the team because the NHLers were playing over in Europe. But basically, it's the best of the, like, the EuroLeague teams against, like, scrub Canadians. And this is what this Olympics is going to look like. It's going to be borderline unwatchable. Well, I mean, I would prefer that no professional leagues would, like, including the KHL, were allowed in this. It's unfortunate that there's it's going to be an uneven playing field, but 
it's a step towards deprofessionalizing the Olympics, and I say thank goodness. I feel like you're, I mean, like with most of your takes, what's, what's, I feel I feel like you're way out on an island with this one. The one yeah, thing, the only thing people really cared about the hockey is that they got to see the best hockey players. That may be true. But the purpose of the Olympics from the beginning with Pierre de Coubertin was about the glorification can, of can, can, amateur. Wait, hold, hold on a second. Can we, can we stop with that might be true instead of just replace that with that's 100% true? Well, well, we can't say that to a certain Yes, we can. No, yes, yes, we can. Maybe you can't because you're nuts, but I can because I'm a rational, sane person with logical takes. The reason the Olympics do so well, why they can't They don't do so well. The ratings have been on decline for like 20 straight years. They still You want to talk you want to talk about the NFL having ratings problems, which is fake news. The Olympics have ratings problems. Sure. They still are one of the most highly rated events of the year even with some of that decline. The point being is that the reason the Olympics captured the world's attention when they did and continue to is because of the glorification of amateur sport. It's sort of sport in the purest sense. It's not one just cashed out in dollars and cents. You don't appreciate that. That's your prerogative. I and millions of others over several decades actually really like the fact that it's it's as pure as we can get in the sporting world. Oh, yeah. If, if, if there's one thing I think about the Olympics, it's almost like the Tour de France. I mean, when I think those things, I think purity. Nothing fishy going on there. And no, no one cares besides you, the athletes themselves, and probably the athletes' families that they're all amateurs. People just like to see countries compete against each other in a grand spectacle. It's the same reason why people who don't like soccer watch the World Cup. But the fact that they're amateurs and they're competing... When, with them, why? I don't understand what that has to do with anything. I'd rather just watch... It's like the same reason I don't like college basketball. I'd rather watch the NBA because the players are better. Yeah, but this is about like patriotism and like a genuine level. That you're sacrificing the ability to make all kinds of money or this, out of the other in order to compete for your country for the sake of rep doing your best for your country. Now, I think that is an ideal to be striven towards. That is something that's worthwhile of my attention once every four years. I'm not interested in simply cashiering my time to just watch professional basketball players in meaningless games in February. I think the Olympics are significantly more important to the sporting world than that. You disagree? That's fine. That's your prerogative. I don't. But I, again, you're way out on an island. Nobody cares sport. about what's going on in the sporting world in the month of February, except for the Winter Olympics. Oh, I, I'm curious to see how, I mean, I, I think it's on TNT, but I'm curious to see how, like, the dunk contest rates. I imagine it will be, it's on a Saturday night, so it will be crushed by the Olympics. See, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, it, when we that's talk about, events. what's that? That's when that's the when best we, events are? Well, I mean, I, I suppose, hold on, hold, hold on one second. I mean, I'm just curious. When we get to whatever your rankings for best events are, they're clearly going to be the worst events. But I want to talk about some news going into this. It's in Pyeongchang, right? Yes. Is that where it is? Sure. North yeah. Korea? <laughs> South Korea. Oh, that's that's too bad. I thought it was in North Korea. And then the Olympic tour should be shot out of the sky by Little Rocket Man. <laughs> Does this weigh on this at all that it's in South Korea? North Korea is right there? Well, it will make it, in theory, kind of special uh, on Friday morning here in North America when both North and South America march in together at the end of the uh, Parade of Nations. That would be at least for, I mean, that's one of the things the Olympics is supposed to do, right? Is there's a truce that's declared in the world and that at least for 17 days, we're supposed to be pretty peaceable and come together the best we can. Uh, you know, it, it does the thing that the United Nations is in, incapable of doing, which is to foster a genuine sense of sort of international cooperation, if only for a brief moment. So you don't think that this Olympics, especially being in the location that it's in, in that part of the world, that, you know, there might be people who use this opportunity to exploit that situation and really draw attention to it in negative ways? No, the only person who's capable of doing that is Kim Jong-un, and I think he'll be on his best behavior. Really? I do, in part because he's allowing North Korean athletes to go. He's sending his sister to be an official observer at the opening ceremonies. He's allowing his athletes to march together with the South Koreans. The new South Korean government is seeming to move towards a more of a rapprochement approach to them, which I have my criticisms with, but that's besides the point. Nevertheless, I think he'll be on his best behavior. A, a rapprochement? A rapprochement. A rapprochement? It means to come together and, and try to make a, a closer alliance or a taunt. Uh, that's what a rapprochement means. So it's oh. from the French. Well, I mean, if there's one thing you are as a man of the people and then using a whole vocabulary of words that no one understands is really ingratiating you to them. I think that word is far more common than you think. Really? Far more common? 
that since you don't think anyone knows it. I think quite. I, I'm not saying that that no one knows it. I mean, I didn't know what it meant. And I'd be curious to see what the viewers think about that. Tweet at Tim at Tim Undercast, and you let him know. No, or tweet his other eight Twitter accounts and let him know if you know what Hanshang means. Rapprochement. Rapprochement. From the French, eh? For the guys who get together. Is that what it means? Essentially, yes. All right. Well, that's good to know. All right. So, other stories. The women's hockey team will be comprised of North Korean and South Korean athletes. Is this this is true? That's right. That's right. Now, what are the odds that, like in the World Cup when North Korea made it, that none of their athletes are actually North Korean, and the people there competing for North Korea and the fans cheering them on are just paid Chinese citizens? Well, no, no. In the World Cup, the athletes were North Korean. It's the fans who were paid uh, Chinese uh, people to dress up as North Korean fans. Because, you know, you can't let those people out of that hellscape. They'll never come back. Well, I mean, also, if you were in North Korea and listened to the World Cup on the radio, you would have thought that North Korea won. You certainly would have. They wouldn't have lost to Brazil 7 nothing, No, sir. No, no, no. They won that game 7 nothing. Best in the world. North Korea. It's soccer. Like... For South, like, what, for South Korea being the host country, what are the sports they have shots at? Like short track speed skating? Yes, absolutely. That is, for uh, over time, that has been the, probably their best sport is short track speed skating. All right. For, uh, for, for most gold medals, South Korea is 28 to 1. They are the seventh favorite. They're actually ahead of France. Yeah, well, I mean, in part because France is actually only competitive in a few small sports. And there's so many medals to be won in the speed skating competition that they can rack some up. I don't think Korea is going to do that. I think that there are too many, like for example, Germany, Canada, United States have better chances of just racking up more gold medals than they do. However, uh, I do think they'll be competitive in, all, in just about every speed skating category. I mean, probably not. I mean, they'll be competitive in every short track speed skating category. Certainly more so, and they, and, they, and they long have been. Sure. And then, then you have to... Is Apollo Ono still a thing? For like uh, the, he for the, he's the He's like the... Football. He's the Scotty Reynolds of the Winter Olympics. He's just... I mean, I'm pretty sure Scotty Reynolds is still on Villanova. I'm not completely sure. But, like, <laughs> Ocho Ono, or whatever the hell his name is, uh, he's going to win, like, eight bronze. And they're like, oh, best athlete in the history of uh, America. He's won so many bronze medals. He's like the American version of Clary Hughes. Yes, I, I guess so. Is Clary Hughes that one who's on the all the Bell Let's Talk posters? Yeah, and she's both a summer and a winter Olympian. Has she has she ever won a gold medal? I don't know if she has won a gold. I know she won a bronze and something. Yeah, I, Apollo Ono is the king of the bronze medal. That's the one thing that I, America really does well with this, and I'm sure China does it quite well. And Canada actually did it really well during the Vancouver Olympics because let's let's be real here. You know, there's competition and you know there's bronze medals, silver medals, and look, if you're the athlete and you win a bronze medal, hell, if you come fourth, you're doing really well. That's a huge accomplishment. But as outside observers, there's only one thing that I think any nation really cares about, and that's gold medals. No one cares about the total medal count. I mean, you can ask Tiki Barber and look that one up on the internet if you really want to go through with it. But the gold medals, like some people will say, hey, total medals wins the Olympics. That's just not true. Whoever wins the most gold wins right precisely like in sochi russia and norway tied canada was one back uh even though uh, now in that situation russia won because they had the most total medals that's the next tie break but uh yeah i mean the gold medals is that is is the objective right that's that 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 is certain all right so the medal counts right now in terms of odds for gold medals norway is even money to win Germany's plus 250. The USA is six and a half to one. Canada is 11 to one. The Netherlands is 18 to one. That's a lot of long track speed skating medals to win there for gold. The OAR, crazy game of poker, 20 to one. South Korea, 28 to one. France, 33 to one. Austria, 50 to one. Switzerland, 66. China, 66 to one. Uh, North Korea, not listed. Others on request. You can go request them. See how many gold medals they win. If I had to guess, I would pick Germany. Really? How come? Because of the downhill and all the skiing events? Exactly. Canada did so well in the last two Winter Olympics because they had two sets of Olympiad where their athletes were getting ready for Vancouver and were still young, so they were still excellent at Sochi. Now they've gotten older again. I don't think they'll be as competitive. Same with the United States. I mean, I think Lindsey Vaughn will do well, but I don't know how many gold medals you can really count out of the Americans. Germany and Norway would be, you know, your debatable ones. I think Germany, you're just getting better odds, so I would take them. All right, for total medals, if that is something that you're interested in, 
Um, I don't know. That's GB total gold medal. Oh, that's Great Britain. Yeah, if you bet no Great Britain gold medals, it's plus 137. Yeah, I would bet that. I, what sports is Great Britain going to be competitive in? Do they I even, can't does, does Great Britain even have snow? Like, for more than, like, two days at a time? They did win a gold medal in uh, Sochi. I'm trying to see what it is that they won in. Uh, in Skeleton, the women's skeleton. Oh, women's skeleton. They did win a gold medal, and they won... I guess, you know what, that's right. The one thing they would have a real chance at, Scotland is, of course, really good at curling, so Great Britain would have a chance ah. at, at the women's curling, right? Yeah, but they're not good at men's curling, though. I, I believe it's just women's men's, curling they're good at. Men's curling was a silver at Sochi, and women won the bronze at Sochi. Okay, so, so, so Scotland, legit. The curling. So Scotland's a part of Great Britain, so they've got a chance. Okay, I mean, they could have taken their shot and left Great Britain and become their own country and just crushed them at the Winter Olympics. <laughs> that would have been, yeah. Their revenge. Uh, total medals. Norway and Germany are even at plus 140 at the top. USA is 5 to 1. Canada's plus 550. Russia is 25 to 1. The Netherlands is 33 to 1. So is France. South Korea is 40. Um, I think for the golds, Canada's not a terrible wager at 11 to 1. They're not a terrible wager, but I think the odds are a bit long. They're almost like suspiciously long. Is there in Canada had the most in 2010 and the second most? in 2014. Well, did, so, did Canada win hockey last time around? Yeah, they won both times, yeah. All right, so, I mean, it's going to be far more difficult for them to win men's hockey this time. Yeah, I think they're the second favorite, which is still... How, how many curling medals did Canada win last time? Two? Both, two of them, yeah. So they would have to pick up one of the curl one of the three curling medals, get lucky with, like, someone on the <laughs> moguls, because despite the fact that we have all these mountains and all these skiers and frigid temperatures, we're not great at skiing. No, skiing, and, and yeah, we, like, the freestyle skiing is fine. Yeah, but, I mean, the only, like, downhill <laughs> skier I can, the only downhill skier I can ever remember from Canadian history is Eric Gay. And, he's the one that, and, he's in and, the and, and the only reason that anyone ever knows his name because you see his name pop up and people just call him Eric Real Gay. He's, and he's in the draw again. Uh, right, so he's probably not going to win because he's been in like 28 Olympics. I wouldn't think so. I mean, Canada won a bronze in Alpine last year with, or in 2014 uh, with Jan Udek. But yeah, for the most part, Canada's good at figure skating, uh, freestyle skiing and snowboarding. Uh, we're not great at sliding. We've never been a great sliding country. So the, the bobsleigh, although we want a golden bobsleigh, we tend not to be great at that. So, so, so I mean, the USA for total medals is five to one. I mean, they'll, yeah, I they'll, like yeah, but they'll be competitive in every, they're the one country that's basically competitive in every single sport. I mean, that's true, but there are certain sports like they just have no chance in. Like, well, that, like that would, that would, that would mean that they're not competitive in those sports. Like the they downhill. have no chance. Like the downhill. There's, there's, no, there's no American who can compete in the downhill? Well, I mean, I think, well, there are Americans competing in the downhill, but the closest one in terms of odds is like plus 5,000. Oh, really? So 50 to 1? Yeah, you've got Norway, Sweet, uh, uh, Switzerland, Italy, Austria, like places, people live in the Alps. Downhill skiing world rankings. I'm going to Google this to see where the top American is. Or maybe you can, you, you, can you Google that? Is that enough to, can I put that on you? I think I can effort that. All right, let's talk about our favorite sports. Because this, this is really where it becomes contentious at the Winter Olympics, because everyone kind of has their niche things that are favored. In terms of ratings, unless the USA, with professional hockey players, is playing in the gold medal, hockey doesn't rate all that well in the United States. Figure skating wins basically every primetime event, because it's the one sport where both men and women sit down and watch it. So that's why figure skating always gets the primetime slot. I mean, I'm not a huge figure skating guy. Are you? No, not really. I mean, I will watch it when it's on, but it would be towards the bottom of the sports I like. All right. Well, do you have a definitive rankings of the best Winter Olympic sports? Of course I do. All right, I was well, preparing. Let, let, let's hear it. So the best sport, because it's the purest, the most uh, connected to the history of the games, would have to be the downhill. It's the first Monday of the Olympic Games. It's, in, for, you know, for Canada, the gold medal hockey game is the most important. Uh, throughout Europe, without question, the most important event is the men's downhill. So the downhill is my absolute favorite. You're, you're, my second, you're off to a really bad start here. My second favorite is the skeleton because it is so crazy insane. Uh, it's so fast and so intimidating and so much fun to watch on TV. I'd have the skeleton at two. 
Then I would have third short track speed skating. I find that to be incredibly exciting, interesting, fun. It's always on the Saturday night before the end of the Olympics, the gold medal events. That's always one of the marquee events. I love it. Uh, the next thing I have thoroughly, so third, or sorry, fourth would be the ski jumping. I think ski jumping is just an incredible feat. And I tip my cap to the people. I don't know how you ever get into ski jumping. Like I don't know who wakes up as a little girl, or little boy, and says, "I want to jump off a big lift with my skis." So well, I, I mean, apparently you've never been to Norway or Austria, sir. I haven't. I have. Then after, then after that, I really enjoy the cross country, like the long. Oh race. my god! They're like, they're like the marathon of the Winter Olympics. No, that 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 no, that is absolute no. That no, no, no. no. That, that is ridiculous. The athleticism is so raw. Oh, yeah. yeah. The cross, cross country skiing. Maybe you can get some snowshoes in there, too. Like, the fu- the give, 50K, give me a break. The 50K cross country skiing event is probably the most physically demanding event in the winter or summer Olympics combined. Yeah, that's okay. Fun. Then, with okay, if, if that's the case, and we're going to put in what's the hardest, why don't we have climbing Mount Everest? But that's not a st- mountain climbing is not a sport. Why not? Why, why can't that be a sport? It's really hard to do. The best okay. people would have to do it. Let's do that. No one wants to fucking watch it. I like to watch it. It's you also this- like to watch the marathon at the Olympics, which is, again, mind boggling. So I like all the cross country skiing. I just think that's really neat and cool. Uh, I, what else do I really like? I like the biathlon and the Nordic combined. Again, I thoroughly enjoy guys who, and girls who are good at multiple things in the same event right you have to both be a talented skier and shooter or skier and ski jumper that's really interesting uh i have respect for you know next on the rank i have respect for the long track but it's not as exciting no i mean it's not clearly as exciting as twenty-five thousand k cross-country skiing I mean, oh yeah I, 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 how, how how could long track speed skating ever compare with that in terms i like to in settle terms of just watch the whole short uh, the whole story cross-country race and it really angers me when they go to commercial in between so i like to watch the whole thing start to finish uninterrupted uh after that i mean like I, luge is fine but it's not as good as skeleton so it has to be ranked lower bobsleigh is also not as good as luge so bobsleigh is kind of low for me and after that i would have like the hockey and the curling rated low because like just, i guess it, it, maybe that's because for me being canadian i see hockey and curling all the time so there's nothing novel about these sports to me so I have them pretty low. It's the same like in the Summer Olympics. The basketball is like the least interesting thing to me because I see basketball all the time. Like there's nothing novel or cool about it. Uh, um, well, okay. So uh, uh, what's that, Paul? Moguls. Yeah. I mean, Moguls. No, no. Moguls are fine. No, no. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to give you my list uh, of my, my favorite ones, like a top five for me for favorite yeah. winter, winter sports. Number one, one you didn't even mention. The aerials are the best sport to watch. It's awesome. Yeah. Why, why don't you like the aerials? Well, I mean, it's it combines it, it combines moguls, ski jumping, and doing flips. Yeah, but it's a like relatively new introduction. Who cares? <laughs> well, well, I don't understand how that's a problem. Like it doesn't harken back to more of the roots of the Winter Olympics, and I mean it's fine. I got no problem with it, but you know it's no downhill. It's no cross country. It, it skiing. is. It, it, it's yeah. It's no cross country skiing. Oh, no, I mean, oh, glory me! Cross country skiing. Oh, I got to sit down and watch that for know, eight hours. Good God. But you no, know, having skeleton at two shows that I'm not completely hidebound. Well, like, well, the, the fact that you don't like aerial seems nuts. If you like skeleton too, I never. I, I like all of these events. I just these aren't my, my favorite events. I Air, gave you aerials number one for me. Number okay. two, short track speed skating. It's the yeah, na- so we, it, it, it's the NASCAR of ice. Yeah, we both love that. So that's both on our top. Well, everyone loves it. It combines everything that we want to see out of Olympic sports. A, no one cares about ski, speed skating. It's irrelevant. I mean, besides, like I said, Ocho Ono or Apollo Ono, whatever the hell his he name is. He's a short tracker. Yeah, he's a short tracker. Yes, he competes in short track speed skating. But if he hadn't been in like the last 40 years of the Olympics, no one would know who he is. It's just something you can tune into. It's like a car crash. You watch it. Curling's going to be number three for me. I don't watch curling throughout the year because you're right. It always is on in Canada. But curling is sort of like the golf of the Olympics. It's just always on. You can have it on in the background. There's you know people from different countries yelling in different languages. I like it. It's just something you can have on in the background. There's no like prime time appointment viewing for curling. But it's just something that you, hey, if you're at the office, hey, chuck it on, curling's on. We'll see who's winning. So Maybe the gold medal game is. Is it? 
Well, I mean, if there was to be an appointment TV curling match, it would I, be that. I, I don't know if there is an appointment TV curling match. I think that people like that it carries all the way through, like, what does it go on for, like, 10 days, 11 days, something like that? I think that? it's from start to finish. In fact, it starts the day before the opening ceremony. See, there, there you go. So it's something that you can just kind of, it, it's a nice measuring stick for the Olympics. You can start at day one or before day one and go all the way to the end. It's, it's a nice, consistent presence in your life at the Olympics. So... For me, curling is going to be number three. I have skeleton on my list as well. I like skeleton. I also, I, I, I don't know if I like it as much as ski cross. Ski cross is awesome. So is snowboard cross, but ski cross is especially awesome. I would ban snowboarding from the Olympics if I could. It's a brand new thing. It came in in Nagano. It was only there just to try to boost ratings. And I mean, you know, the... You know, you think about what the Olympic sports are. No one back in Samaritz in the 1920s was rocking down, uh, you know, the Matterhorn on a snowboard. It's just a modern, pre-millennial... Wait, well, hold on a second. Is this because you can't stand up on a snowboard? I've never tried to snowboard. So, you, I, so still the answer is yes, you can't stand up on a snowboard. But I've seen before, and I rather like to ski, although I don't do it very often. Uh, snowboarding has never appealed to me. It just seems... I don't know. It's just... It seems like, like a California introduction into the Winter Olympics. It's sort of like out of place. You, wouldn't that be sandboarding? You know what I mean. It's like the beach volleyball in the summer game. I love I it. Everyone loves beach volleyball besides you. No, I, I don't like it. I That's because you, you know why? Because you don't like hot babes. That's why. No, it's like the only thing. No, it is. That is 100% why it is. You just hate it's hot babes. You hate beach volleyball. It's not applicable to the summer games. I am looking for a more purity to sport when I'm watching these 17 days of athletic competition. I hold the Olympics in very, very high esteem. Yeah, it's because yeah, it's 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 you're a big loser. And as, no. when it comes to the purity of everything, is that the scantily clad women make you feel too unpure? That's why well, it needs to be banned? I grew up in a household where the Olympics were sacrosanct. It was my house or my grandparents. It was always on. People loved the Olympics. And I don't like to see a whole bunch of fangled changes to it from the way I understood it and knew it. All right, another thing on my list. Half pipe. The half pipe rules. Oh, that's so dumb. Again, is it it because you can't? You don't like things with flips, apparently. It belongs to the X Games. And again, and that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with the X Games, but the Olympics. It, it, it sounds like you're talking down to the X Games. These things were so popular and so successful and so athletic at the X Games, they had to put them in the Olympics. Now, mainly because no one gave a shit about the Winter Olympics, so they had to put in sports that people actually cared about. Well, I mean, I understand that was the logic behind it. It doesn't mean I have to be happy about it. I, I just, I don't see what downside there is to watching the half pipe at the Winter Olympics. It's one of the most fun things you can watch. Uh, yeah, but I'm not just interested in it, things being fun. I'm interested in the sport having a connection through the decades to various athletes. You know, when somebody's winning the downhill, they can go back 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And if someone wins a hockey tournament, they can go back to the 20s. Like there's a cross connection amongst countries and eras that like winning the half pipe Oh wow, you and Ross Rebliotti are in the same, you know, community. Like what what does that mean? I don't uh, think I don't think that Ross Rebliotti competed in the half pipe. I think he was like downhill. Was he down? I thought he was half pipe. Nah, uh, you, I, I, I feel I feel like Sean White wins the half pipe every single year. He does, although I, is he not injured? Yeah, I think he's coming back for this though. Oh, is he? Okay. And that I mean he's probably Lindsey Vaughn and Sean White are probably the two biggest winter Olympic athletes. They are until whichever uh, figure. female athlete in the in the figure skating becomes the queen of the games, and she will be. Well, well, I mean, as long as she's American, as long as she's American, but there almost always is a female figure skater who captivates at least America's attention, and she becomes the most important person in the games. All right, so I, I'm, I'm going to re- redo these rankings there. So half pipe, curling, skeleton. I do like the skeleton of all like the bobsled luge and skeleton. Skeleton is by far my favorite. It looks terrifying. Oh, I, I can't imagine. Again, I don't know how you get into that. Yeah, you're just a you're, you. You're into the luge. You're part of this whole luge scene. You think it's a bit too fancy for you. You need something more extreme. Yeah, it's, I suppose that's it. Like you just have that daredevil streak, which I have a great respect for. I mean, any of the sliding stuff is is daredevil. Okay, so my top six: the aerials, short track speed skating, ski cross, half pipe curling, and skeleton. Dead fucking last, hockey this time around. Just get it out of there. Just take it out like they took out baseball. If you're not going to have the pros, just no one wants to see it. Well, but it's, it existed long before the pros came in, and so it'll exist. Yeah, 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 don't care. 
Just don't give a shit about that. Just take it out. Well, but people forget, like, the 1994 hockey tournament was incredibly... Oh, yes. Cool. If, if, there's one, if there's one thing that people constantly come up and tell me about is their experience with the 1994 hockey competition. Yes, the Lillehammer. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, no one talks about all the other ones where all the pros were there that they actually remember. It's the one that no one remembers or gives a shit about. That's the one that they actually come up and talk about. It was so remembered that it was put on stamps. It was a very important one. It's where the Swedes defeated Canada in a shootout. It's very, very, again, some of us who have a memory of the games know about this and think it was kind of important. Well, it's not. I mean, it, it might be very important in Tim world, just like weird rankings of really bad foods, but to everyone else, no, not really. My, my rankings are excellent. So the top six for me would be then the Alpine skiing downhill, then the short track speed, or the skeleton, the short track speed skating, then what did I have? I mean, then I, I mean, those are the three that I love the most. And then I can jump around in any direction that you well, want. Well, you seem to be a big fan of fucking cross country skiing. Yeah, that would be for, I mean, I guess I'd have to have the cross country skiing for, I'd have to have biath that biathlon five and ski jumping six. Like, do you like the ski jumping? Eh, I'm wishy washy on it. It's pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, listen, I'm not saying it's not impressive. I'm just saying I don't like to watch it. Okay. It's like the downhill. The downhill's all right. It looks dangerous. I, I mean, I like oh. the danger element of it, but I don't know. I like the moguls better. I mean, I like the aerial better. It's, you know, doing the moguls, going back and forth, doing some flips. They have that, like, cross thing that they do with their skis. I feel like that's a big move. It is. I mean, listen, I, I get it. It's not going away, but, you know. And I'll watch it because I love the Olympics. But Well, that this brings me to our next segment, sports to add to the Winter Olympics. I feel like it, sure. could, it there's not that many sports. Like, I'm just looking at them all right here. There's, there's really not a ton. I feel like they could get juiced up with something. So do you have any ideas for what they could do for, A, moving sports over from the Summer Olympics to the Winter Olympics to jazz them up a bit or even add some stuff in? I have a theory. So bear with me with this. And I know you okay. like boxing. I always consider boxing a very summer Olympic sport. So keep boxing at the summer Olympics, but at the same time, move some of the other martial arts over to the winter Olympics. Move over like judo, add jujitsu, and then have MMA be an Olympic sport. I was going to say the MMA, I mean, because MMA doesn't have any sort of real history. Sure, if you wanted to move that to the winter Olympics, if, you, if it needs to go, that, that that's fine with me. I wouldn't bother me. It's neither a summer nor a winter thing. It's indoors. I'm fine with that. I mean, I've long said and still say the basketball tournament doesn't belong in the summer games. It gets lost. Uh, there's too many things going on. It's also not a time of year when people are playing basketball. It would, be, it would be a better fit in the winter games for a lot of reasons. Yeah, but they, but I mean, they want one of the, one, one of the critical things about basketball being there is that the Americans send all the top players. Every country sends their top players, the NBA guys. So if you put it, you're, if you put it in the middle of the NBA season, then you're going to suffer the same fate as the NHL, and they won't want them going. Maybe, or maybe they'll send them. I mean, no, or, or, or they probably won't, and then we <laughs> lose basketball and no one will care. Just like hockey I, this time around. I think that there's a better chance than not that they would send them. And of course, TV ratings would be higher in February than in August. People are more likely to watch TV then. I think it's worth, at least on a trial basis, moving it to at least for one Olympiad. And if it doesn't work, then you can go back to the summer. That's fine. But like the, it's not difficult. The NBA takes a two-week break. You skip the All-Star game every fourth year. So there's no great hardship. All right. Uh, and it's probably so, better for the So next thing in the Winter Olympics, poker. Maybe darts, too. I, I, that now we're just trying to figure out. Like, there should be some sort of wintry aspect to most of these things. Like basketball's play in the winter, which is why you can justify it. I, I mean, e even like when we all live back at home, we played far more poker in the winter than we did in the summer. Like I was thinking, like something like tobogganing. Like you could be like think of some sort of like isn't that what bobs isn't that what bobsledding is? Well, bob what is tobogganing? Like, like what five year olds do? Like yeah. Do you want like, like the a, kids Olympics? But like on a hill, like not in a in a sliding track, but like on a sled, like on the snow that you could sort of move around. That kind of would be cool, I think. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd rather like that. So I, I'm with all the combat. No What's that? Snowshoeing. I too would have snowshoeing in there. What about ice fishing? Well, I, 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 how do you win? You catch the most fish? Like, that's not that nothing to do with you. It's sort of like beside. Well, I mean, I mean, half these sports are done by corrupt judges anyway. Maybe you just get jugged on your jigging stroke. Yeah, well, as you've seen, every one of the sports I've mentioned, uh, you win by time or by winning. You don't win by judging. Yeah. I think judging is a problem. Well, I mean, I think that's both one of the reasons people like and hate figure skating. Because there's there's the corrupt aspect to it that I think intrigues people. Oh yeah, and it's easy if your if your country's uh, athlete loses, say, oh well, that's fixed. Yeah, fake news. 
And some of us are not, not above claiming something's fixed when it doesn't go our way. Well, speaking of which, this is the reason that it can't be in there. But let's say American Ninja Warrior wasn't rigged. That would make a good Olympic sport. Okay, well, first, it isn't rigged. You can say it's massaged by the uh, by the producers, if you like. I'll just say There's, it's... I'll, I'll tell you this. It's fake news. Yeah, it's It really isn't. They have thousands of people come to the Las Vegas Strip to watch these people compete in a real event. It's not all completely choreographed and decided, okay, you're going to drop at this uh, challenge. You're going to drop at yeah, that. Yeah, no, that is exactly how it works. Now, obviously, some people you know get hurt doing it. It's a lot like wrestling. I mean, if we're going to put American Ninja Warrior in the Olympics, we got to put WWF in the Olympics, too. No, we don't. Yeah, I think we do. I'm trying to think of some other, like, snowy sports that would be cool for the Olympics. Ice that, sculpting? That could be a <laughs> judge sport. It could be, but it's, you know, someone said horse ice dancing, which Ooh. I assumed, which I assumed was a shot at me. It is. Because I'm a fan of the dressage. Because <laughs> the dancing horses are cool, and who doesn't? It's actually really impressive stuff, and the horses are athletes, so. Uh... I mean, th that's the thing. The Winter Olympics are sort of at a point of satiety. There isn't a whole lot that we could put there. Speed walking marathon? <laughs> yeah, but I'd have to be outside. Like a, sh a snowshoe marathon, that could be interesting. But like we already have the majesty of the King's Race and the cross-country skiing events. Like I wouldn't want to do anything to, to overshadow those like captivating moments in sports. Oh, this guy says move team handball to winter. I like that because there's not enough team sports in the Winter yeah. Olympics. I, I'd be yes. for that. I, I, I would be okay with that. I mean, we have indoor sports already like curling and hockey. Team handball would be fine. There. Oh, how about, how about dog sled racing? That You know what? I'm a fan of that idea. Like that, the, that's, I, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Whoever came up with that has is, is done well. That's a very good idea. How about snow volleyball? Mm, I don't know how that would even work. Well, I mean, you set up the net. And then you, have a, then you have a then you have then you have a ball and it goes back and forth over them. It's a lot. It's a lot like beach volleyball, but the surface you see is snow, not sand. All right, all right. Maybe you could wear. I mean, it wouldn't be as sexy, although it could be. Could be super sexy, but it'd be very cold though. It would be very. There'd be a lot of frostbite potential. Yeah, I mean, you, or you could just wear snowsuits. That that would really kill the sexiness factor of it all. But you know, it'd be fine. Your mobility wouldn't be the greatest either. No, but I mean, that would make it more difficult now, wouldn't it? <laughs> I suppose. What else do we got here? Table tennis? Bowling! Could also, Bowling could be in there. You could, or you could introduce some more like Nordic combined style things where instead of, or biathlon style things, instead of skiing and shooting, maybe it's, you know, skiing and mo or like downhill and moguls, or, you know, you could come up, or snowboarding and shooting or something. You could come up with some... Uh, sort of smash together sports if you want it. How about the uh, polar bear dip? So you can stay in the, wa the cold water the longest. I'm sure that would not end poorly. I, I, that sounds great. There's so many heart attacks. Yeah, well, again, I don't think after the Vancouver games, I think they're trying to get away from people accidentally uh, expiring during the games. All right, so mountain climbing we can put in there. What about more skateboarding? I mean, skateboarding seems like more of a summer thing, but I, I can see it in the Winter Olympics. Just build an well, indoor facility. Snowboarding is like supplant, so no. And snowboarding shouldn't be there anyway. So snowboarding should be there. Just, again, just because you can't stand on a skate snowboard, almost probably like a skateboard, which I'm assuming is even more difficult for you, that it doesn't mean it shouldn't be there. I've never tried. I've just had no interest in it. The, the majority of North Americans, at least. I mean, it's the one, I mean, the reason that it's in there is to give North America a shot in some of these ski oh, yeah. events. I mean, that, that's, that's really why it's there. But, I mean, that's what the majority of North, and North Americans are doing now. They don't grow up skiing. They grow up snowboarding. I mean, I, I think that's true, and that is a problem. It's one of the things... Why, I okay, remember. why is that a problem? Like, because you don't like it? Because well, the, the you can't do it? It's a is that a problem? Ban it! Makes me feel bad! Well, it's that skiing is being eclipsed for this new thing, when, of course, skiing has, a, you know, a centuries of tradition and history that connects generations, and that snowboarding is... So, so what you're saying is that you don't like snowboarding for the same reason that you think slavery should still exist. No, for the same reason I think Thai food is taking over from Chinese. But, hey, it's because it was so traditional to you? Then it's like it's supplanting something that I think is important in the cultural touchstone. You know, stuff changes. Deal with it. Yeah, but just because something changes doesn't mean we have to accept every change. We, changes I, I don't. Stuff. I don't think that we do accept every change. But I think people are pretty on board that snowboarding is better than skiing. No, I, I don't think that's true. But then why do more people do it? 
I actually don't think they that do. Is- By the numbers, more people snowboard than ski. Anytime I go to it, anytime I've been to like a skiing event. What was the or- last time that you were at a skiing event? I'd like to hear this. Well, the last time I went to a ski hill, I don't know, probably a decade ago. At, would you say at least a decade ago? Yeah, at least actually. So probably 20 years ago? I don't know if it was 20. It was sometime in the mid 2000s. Are you sure about that? Yeah, yeah. I used to go every year or so to 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 Martok to ski. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it sounds like you're an expert on uh, knowing I, who skis and who's not. Am I an expert? But I mean, the way that you're speaking, you sound very definitive in what you're saying instead of you know no. looking at the facts. Again, this is why you present your feelings as facts instead of real no, facts. No, I don't do that. Live your truth, Tim. Live it. Everyone has the same truth. No, you just live your truth because you're in your crazy world. Your truth is just different. No, that's not how it works. But it, for, I mean, for you, it very vividly works that way. No. All right, I got one more thing before I get out of here about the Winter Olympics. You don't want to talk about some of the betting sports? Yeah, we can, but I, I really want to talk about this. Women's right. hockey should not be an Olympic sport. Straight yeah, up, take it out of the Olympics. And I'm not saying that women's hockey isn't a sport. That's not what I'm saying. But there's supposed to be an element of competitiveness to a lot of these sports, and women's hockey just doesn't have it. There are two teams in the world that are good at it. And again, this is something to make sure that North America gets its medals and North America not the best at skiing and stuff like that. So women's hockey is a guaranteed medal for Canada and the US. In fact, they're by far the best two teams in the world. Tim, you even mentioned by the betting odds, the next closest team is what, 16 to one to win? And even those are terrible odds. Yeah, I'll pull it up here. Hockey for women. Uh, Yeah, plus 1600 for both the Olympic athletes of Russia and Finland. So what they need to do is work on it one of two ways. You can either take it completely out because it's non-competitive, or you just say you concede the gold and silver medal to Canada and the U.S. You get a written statement from all these other countries. They'll agree because they're tired of being shellacked and embarrassed by these two teams. I think there was one close game ever. Finland almost beat the U.S. And it was like, oh, my God, bigger than Miracle on Ice. They almost won. It was one of those deals. So let Canada and the U.S. over the course of the two weeks play like a seven-game series to see who wins the gold medal and then run another tournament for the bronze medal. So it's like winning a gold medal, but you know you're not as good as the first two teams. I mean, that's, that, that, that feels like a very logical conclusion to make women's hockey not, more watchable. It's not actually all that dissimilar to what some summer sports do, like when they have the repechage round for the bronze, uh, except that this time you would just be immediately sent to that sort of repechage. It's, it's not that actually, it's not a terrible idea. I mean, I can see why there would be protest about it, but do, do, I understand. Do, do, you, do you think that people in these other countries care about women's hockey enough to protest about it? No, but I could see... Purists, ad- like, purists like you would very, be very upset about it? I could see advocates saying that you're treating women's hockey different than men's hockey and that they should be treated equally. Like You can see that argument being mounted. I mean, I, I'm all for... I mean, if the NHL players were still here, I mean, that's what makes it kind of difficult because who knows how good some of these I, I assume russia is going to be by far the best at hockey this time around because they have all the khl players i mean i see their odds at plus 225 and canada's at plus 275 like canada's essentially sending minor leaguers and beer league guys i don't, I don't think it's essentially i think that is what they are doing yeah okay so and the the khl players are legitimate professional hockey players i mean legitimate might be a bit of a stretch because who knows with Shakunari is, is going on. I, I, I mean, Putin might be on that team for all I know. I mean, I think he plays, I think he owns like three of the teams. Either way. He plays in the All-Star game each year and scores like 12 goals. Well, he's so good. I mean, he should probably I, be on the team. I do think that would set up, though, that if Canada and Russia played in the hockey final, you'd actually see really big ratings for it in Canada because it would be a rare opportunity where Canada is like the underdog in its sport. Sure. And I think that would be like an attractive thing for ratings. If that was the case and Canada played Russia for the gold medal in hockey this time around, it would get one eighth of the ratings as Canada in a normal hockey year. I don't think in Canada. Yeah, no, in Canada. You think so? One yeah, no, I, I don't think so. I know so. We'll see. I mean, I would agree with you they'd be lower ratings. I think one eighth is, is, is a bit much. So the last time that Canada played for the gold medal, now you have to understand that Canada is a country of 36 million people. 27 million people watched the game. The, the Vancouver ones or the Sochi ones? The Sochi ones. Okay. And the Vancouver ones. It's like every single person in the country watches this. That's not happening this time no, around. No, I agree, but you could get 15 or 16 They're not million. getting that many. They might get 5 million, maybe 4 million. 
I don't know. I think it would do better. Which would be the highest rated thing by far at the Olympics for Canada. Unless, again, we have some figure skater like Elvis Stoiko doing ninja dancing. But <laughs> other than that, I mean, it's, that, that's what it's going to be. I'm not even seeing commercials for it. Well, you're not, you don't watch a lot of CBC. No, that's Ninja true. I do. But TSN and CBC will be wall to wall with it. Yeah, I know that they'll have it. But the, the, in other years, like the fact that Canada is not sending its NHL players, our most known athletes, to the Olympics, it just it doesn't have the same buzz. Like no one's talking about it. I would agree that the NHL players not being here has, has hurt some of the buzz. I would not dispute that. I think it could produce a more interesting uh, hockey tournament in terms of a sport but it will have less viewership. Okay. So some bets. You got any bets? I got one sent to me. Paul, who was it? Uh, Evan Scrimshaw. Evan Scrimshaw. DM me this, this bet. If you parlay together the Canadian mixed curling team with the Canadian women's and the Canadian men's, it'll pay 20 and a half to one. And if you parlay Jordan Spieth to win the Masters with it, 68 to one. Well, I think there's a really good chance of those three t- uh, curling things happen. I think... This trend of parling things with Jordan Spieth is kind of crazy and doesn't make much sense. The but only the only reason that I've done it is because you guaranteed me he couldn't win the Masters, which inevitably means he's going to win the Masters. I listen. There is no curse. We saw that at the Super Bowl. No, do do we see that at the Custies? Because I think we saw it at the Super Bowl after you shook Goskowski's hand. The guy couldn't kick anymore. I he suffers from he suffers from dead leg all of a sudden, and then we just went over the Custies. I mean, you cursed like eighty five things this year. The poor thimble. In Monopoly. Out of the game. I shook a lot of people's hands, and I don't get any credit for the people who didn't do poorly. Well, how about this? The the main guy that you talked to, and he was very tentative about shaking your hand, was Steven Goskowski. And the guy that refused to shake your hand, Elshon Jeffrey, had a great game. Well, so did Ertz, and he gave me a bump. And maybe that's the thing. Maybe the bump doesn't transfer. I, I, I don't know. I, I think... I mean, I mean we're, we're learning as we go... Because the sample size keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but it seems like fist bumps are a way to avoid the Ander curse. It's a block. I think there is no curse. I like that parlay of the three curling teams together. I think that's actually a really smart bet. I think that's, you know what? I think that's free money. Oh, God. I already bet it, though. (sighs) Okay, well, then you're going to cash that ticket. Why'd you have to say that? Because it's what I believe. And I must speak my opinion with perfect liberty. But you won't even bet on this. I'll bet on some stuff no, you, for you, sure. But you won't bet on this. You've proclaimed this to Kate. Not you've proclaimed this to be free money. It pays twenty and a half to one, but it's something that you won't bet on, despite the fact that it's free money. And you've just ruined it and cursed it for me and a bunch of other people I know. So thanks for fucking nothing. Well then, so if it succeeds, will I get credit for it? Then? No, you didn't even bet on it. But I so I won't get it. I get no credit if I'm right, and I get nothing but scorn if I lose. Yes. Head, heads I lose, tails you win. Yes. That seems very nice. Well, that's the way it's going to be. So if you're going to bet it, bet it. Or otherwise, just shut your fucking mouth about the bets. Well, you were talking about them, and I had an opinion. <sighs> is there Steve? stuff? Is there stuff? Stuff you're actually going to bet on? Well, I mean, there's stuff I really like. Stuff I really like. But are you actually gonna are you actually gonna bet on it? Because I don't want to hear fucking anything is free money unless you've wagered on it. Because if it's free money, why wouldn't you wager on it? I actually don't have any other free money. However, I will be taking in the twenty k individual men the uh, Martin Fourcade from France. It's like minus one fifty in the biathlon. That seems like crazy low odds. Somebody knows something, so I'm just gonna back him. That just how could an event with you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of people. He's minus 135 in the 20K individual men biathlon. Uh, how are the odds that low? Who knows enough about biathlon to, to, to scope it like that? Let's take Monsieur Fourcade. Uh, we'll roll with him. And where is he from? France? France. We'll take him in the 15K men mass start too. He's plus 125. <laughs> in fact, you know what? We're going to take him in every event. I guarantee he wins four medals. I won't. He's in four events. He wins four medals. Four golds? Won't say the color of them. There'll be at least one well, gold. Well, you're betting on them to win. You better hope they're fucking gold. I think he'll win at least one gold, but I think he wins. He medals in all four of his events. Martin for Cad, I'm on your side. So you found the biggest favorite at the Olympics in these sports to back. Just so you can sound like you know what you're talking about and try to, in your mind, prove that there is no curse. I worry about this man's life. 
He could be have, he could be the next Roger Moore. I have complete confidence in him. What's his name again? Martin or Ma- Martin. Ma- Martin. Four Cade. F O U R C A D E. F O U R. Say that again. C A D E. C A D E. Four Cade. Martin Four Cade avec le. What's golden French? Or. Ew. So, le médaille d'or. So no, what's silver? A U. Argent. Argent. So L Argent bronze. I don't know what bronze is. Do you? Bronze. Is it bronze? Yeah. So Martin Fouquet avec le bronze, or probably le quatrième place finish, eh? <laughs> Somehow he's gonna get disqualified in all these things. He's won so many world championships, and he's won. <laughs> is he like the only guy who does this? No, he's not the only biathlete, but he's won two golds, four Olympic medals in the past. Uh, this guy is, this guy's a shoe in. All right, I'm all on. That'll do it on the Pat Mayo experience. Do you have any final thoughts on the Olympics? Uh, it's a great 17 days of sport. It's 17 not just... days. Oh, couldn't they condense this into like two days? It's a great if you're a sports fan. This is this and the Summer Olympics are the two times every four years you get to expand your horizons and watch stuff that no one else watches. And one of my favorite things about the Olympics is that if you're talking with friends and family, people become experts on sports they know nothing about. So Just quickly. like you proved for this entire show. Like, well, I never proclaimed to be an expert in luge or an expert. You watch, if you're watching with friends or family, after like people watch like four or five runs on the luge, people start saying, oh yeah, see, you didn't get a very good start there. Like they can start figuring things out. And that's that to me is kind of fun. It's kind of neat. Yeah, but then that requires a whole bunch of people sitting around watching the luge. Which is kind of fun. I can see if you were like really drunk or really high and had nothing to do, then sure. If the Olympics are on, I'm watching it. God bless the Olympics. Which one did we watch all of the ones of? We watched the, both the Vancouver Olympics, pretty much all of it. And yeah. we watched a lot of the London Olympics together, too. Yeah, and do you know why that I ended up watching so much of the Winter Olympics? Do you know what the common theme was for me to watch so much of it? I was around. You were around, and I legitimately had nothing going on in my life. Okay, but... So I I was able to watch 12 hours of it a day. Yeah, we watched a lot of the London games. I don't remember watching any of the London games. Remember? Because your roommate was busy running. We we came to visit uh, you in Toronto. Your roommate was busy working weird hours. That's true. Shout out Eric O'Neill. And he got very fired up for the women's soccer team. And I told him to calm down. And he told me, you don't get to tell me what to like. You didn't tell him to calm down. You told him to sit down and stop being so excited about the women's soccer team. This is true. All true stories. That point, you don't get to tell me what te- what to like. Do you, are you going to, you, you talked about how Canada has really great coverage of this. Now, a lot of that has to do with more channels dedicated to it. Plus the OTT service through CBC is really, really good. So if you get a VPN, just CBC is going to have any sport on demand, basically that you want to watch. I don't think the Americans have it the same way. I don't know what any of that means. That's because you know nothing about technology. I'm watching on television like a normal person. Well, that's the thing. If you, if you, if you, especially if you're in America and you want to try to watch some of this stuff on TV, it's just not going to be on. It's also one of the great. The Summer Winter Olympic Games are also one of the great things to watch at the gym. If yeah, that's working, true. It, 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 it is. Yeah, that's, that's the case. That's because if you go to the gym midday, which I know not a lot of people do, but I mean, I do sometimes. Well, I, I, I just went. I, I filmed two shows today. I went in between. I went for a lunch lift and a quick run. Um, but I mean, you go during the day. A lot of people go during the day. The problem with going to the middle of the day gym session, if you're going to watch TV, if you're running or doing anything, like, any sort of cardio is, I mean, I got to catch the Raptors game from last night on repeat, which is always nice when like sports are on. But generally speaking on TV, you're getting some like Judge Judy, like the low rent Judge Judy, Storage Wars is on a lot, which is hard to watch without sound. Uh, talk shows like there's not anything to really kind of I don't want to say grip you but at least stuff that's moving along like there's a score going up like I always like for the first like hour of the football games I like to go to the gym and run for the first hour and like watch all the games at once then I can go settle in for the day just but the Olympics will provide you with for two weeks that content yes I, I agree that is probably where I will end up watching most of the Olympics is at the gym without sound and I really don't care what's going on I just care that it's not Judge Alex yeah I mean not to besmirch Judge Alex. I like the Judge shows quite a bit, actually. Not but... shocking. You know who else loves every Judge show? Everyone's grandparents. Well, I grew up watching a lot of Judge Oh, shows. Tim, don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining, all right? <laughs> 
I think you should get together with Judge Judith Scheinlin. She's right in your wheelhouse. I like Judge Judy. I still watch her a couple times a week. Do you think she's hot? No, but I think she's a, a sharp mind and she can she can cut through the nonsense. But was it you who told me that these things that Judge Judy pays for the uh, the outcome of the result, no matter what happens? Yeah, it's a part of being on the show. She doesn't physically pay it out of her pocket. But well, a, show, a, to, to agree to be on the show means that the production company will cover the cost either way. That's why it's small claims court. Nothing gets over five thousand dollars. The I found that the very settlements hard. are final. Well, that's it. And I just thought. I mean, like. Why would anybody even bother to mount much of a defense? I Because it's TV, Tim. Why do people go on Maury? Well, but that's different. Is it different? It's people this wanting like, to be like, on TV. Like legal disputes and like, I don't understand. I, I, I that can't be the case. I mean, I, I know they pay for. The, 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 there's a, there's a lot of things that you just think that cannot be the case, especially I when it comes, understand. especially when it comes to TV where everything is rigged and fixed. It's just like I, how you don't think that they plant things in the storage wars people's lockers. I don't think that. I'll go to my grave believing that. I think that they again. This is why alone. you don't believe in facts, and it's okay because in 2018 you're allowed to live your truth. Well, but just I'm understand. Not a- it's not factual. You live I'm in dream world. Conspirat- I'm not as conspiratorial. I'm as not you. conspiratorial. I work in TV. I know how this fucking stuff works. Yeah, but not everything is rigged. Yes, it is. No, I won't believe it. I won't believe it. I won't believe it. I won't believe it. Until I see it with my own eyes being rigged, I will believe that it is true. Well, may God have mercy on your soul, sir. <laughs> that. Was Tim Andergast? Tim Andergast. Not my name. Heard it was. No, it's at Tim Anderson 87 on Twitter. I am the maven of the internet. I bring the funny. I am uh, the People's Tribune. Well, since you know, football season has now come to its conclusion, and now the Winter Olympics, we, we, we're not going to have a whole lot of Tim Andergast in our lives much more. We'll get, get you for Oscars. Yeah, Academy Awards, random corners, I guess. Yeah, well, I'm trying to space those out. The corner is more of a summer thing, right, Cuss Corner? Yeah, NFL schedule release in a month or so. Yeah, we'll have our pop-up, but you know, you're probably done every single week now. Yeah, it's true, but uh, all good things must come to an end, and uh, I'll, I'll be back. Yeah. Probably. Maybe. So that'll do it for me. I'm Pat Mayo. Subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience on all places where you can download podcasts. Rate, review takes, I usually say five seconds, but legitimately it takes like 20 seconds. Either way, it's a big help to me to keep the show free. You want to keep the show free? Go do that. Same with giving it a like on YouTube and any video platform that you might watch it on. You can follow me at the PME on Twitter and on Facebook and on Instagram at, get this, the PME. Who would have thunk? Anyway, enjoy the Winter Games. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Great. Thank you. It will not be good if Mr. Forkad like gets hurt or something. <laughs> no, it won't, will it? My menchies will be on fire. Your mentions are always on fire. All you do is bad takes. No, no. People seem to be relatively sympathetic to my Chinese food. They food. really don't. Well, some people were upset. Other people were not. When you say other people, I saw one person say, this isn't the worst list I've ever seen. And you're taking that as positive feedback. One person was fired up that I included Rangoons at all. Yeah, he was mad because it was too low on your list. Well, okay, but at least it was on so that, that That is what you're taking as a win here. Yes, I'm claiming that as a victory. Again, you're living your truth. I don't have a truth. There is only the truth. Yeah, which, which, which you don't seem to accept as reality. That's, no, why you, that's why you are living your truth. To be fair, there is no objective truth other than my rankings to a the, the best dishes at a Chinese food place. All right. I'll see you later. See ya. <laughs>